Welcome to today's video. In case you don't know me yet, my name is Freya. I'm 47 years old and I'm currently 28 weeks and three days pregnant with our twins that are conceived through embryo adoption. We went to the Czech Republic in May, had two embryos transferred and both of them stuck, which we are so grateful for. Okay, today I'm just gonna give you the update. Um, first of all, I'm gonna show you some footage of the ultrasound, but I'm gonna talk over it because all he did was just measure. The good thing is the babies are measuring wonderfully. They're right on time and he said, their sizes are just like it would just be a, like a one baby. So it they don't even look like they're multiples when it comes to their size. They're, you know, well proportioned and they're quite quite as big as one baby would be. So that's a good thing. Um, each one is right now about 1300 grams. Oh, that's quite a bit already. So we're really happy about that. And we actually, this time, <laughs> found out without a shadow of a doubt, both genders. So last time we saw 100% for sure that there was a boy. Um, we had guessed before that it would be a boy and a girl, but we couldn't really tell 100%. It was kind of really early. And then for all the ultrasounds that we tried to check, uh, one of the babies, just always hid behind the other. And so when they turn their bodies away from the ultrasound and you know, like the back is facing the ultrasound, you, there's no chance to actually look what is down there between the legs. But this time we got to see it 100%. And um, the cool thing is Romy and I were right. It is, a boy and a girl. So we couldn't be happier. Of course, I would have been happy with anything, you know, two boys, two girls, but this is such perfect combination because, you know, Romy will have a girl that you can relate to more. And of course, she's always looking forward to playing with the girl. Um, of course, I tell her, you know, you're, all, you're gonna be 10 next year already. And maybe you don't even want to play with that kind of stuff that you think you want to play with now when they're old enough to play. But she is very certain, no, 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 I, I definitely want to play. And especially with girl stuff. <clears throat> and she wants to be a responsible big sister and teach, <laughs> teach the boy how to treat girls nicely. Because in school she has made, <laughs> you know, some really bad experience of boys being really, really mean to girls. So she's like, we have a chance now, like I can, I can really teach the boy how to be really nice to girls. You don't have to be mean. And I think that is so sweet. The night before last night, I hardly got any sleep at all. I think I slept only about three hours or so because of the fact that the babies were so crazy active. I just don't know what it was. I don't know. The weird thing is even on the ultrasound last time, the boy was on the left and the girl was on the right. And this time the girl was on the left and the boy was on the right. That is really weird. And the girl was more in front and the boy was more in back. However, boy is still the leading twin, meaning he's the lower one, which means he's also gonna be the one born first. He's still head down. He has been head down for, I think the, like the past two ultrasounds that I went to. So it's been a while. I'm really hoping that he stays head down. Girl was feet down this time, um, just like she had been last time. But I'm still hoping maybe she'll still turn around. If they can kind of switch places, I don't know. They still have space to actually flip around. But um, yeah, I'm trying. I'm still doing my exercises, and I always do a lot of exercises that involve you know, rotating pelvis and low squats, sitting in low squats. And I'm gonna look into more videos about, you know, opening up the pelvis. So you get into positions that encourage baby to go low down. Of course, when you have twins, it's really only one of them can have that ideal starter position like you would have when you have one baby where the head is like really nicely down in the pelvis. Since one baby will always be lower and the other one will sit, you know, lie a little bit higher, 
for the second baby it's you know it's that urge isn't as strong to go head down but i think you know i walk a lot outside and i'm i'm active not in a sense that i'm like up on my feet a lot but i'm moving and i think you know i'm not sitting a lot but i'm definitely walking around a lot whenever i do stuff in the kitchen or you know i go outside i'm like there's always so much stuff i'm like i feel like i'm on my feet a lot just kind of walking around and doing stuff um which is a lot better than just sitting sitting kind of closes up your pelvis and um yeah when you look into the anatomy of how the bones work together the pelvis is quite flexible and uh, there is room for movement to make it wider on the top or wider on the bottom wider in the back so it's not static and depending on your position you can actually widen the top that encourages baby to have more space to descend but we still have time i'm only in my 29th week next week i will start my 30th week which means I, i'm well into my last trimester which is very exciting I, there's one thing that has been really bothering me. I'm really getting restless legs. When I was at the doctor's just a couple days ago, they took my iron level and it was so low, which is kind of crazy because I don't even feel that tired. I really don't. And I should feel so tired for having an iron level of 9.0 which before that, I think it was 11.4. I don't remember, hold on. And the interesting thing is I went to my midwife and that was on the 28th of October. Yeah, that was on the 28th of October. She took my blood and so that wasn't that long ago, less than a couple weeks ago. And then my iron was at 11.7 and I'm wondering how in the world can it go down from 11.7 to 9 like within just 10 days. I did some research and I found that your iron levels, your blood iron levels fluctuate a lot throughout the day. By 20% they can fluctuate. However, my doctor wants me to start taking iron supplements which I have on hand anyway. I, you know, because I always worked out a lot and I what used to be a runner, I have not been taking them because I also read that too much iron isn't so good. So I'm really careful about supplements during pregnancy, but I have started taking the 50 milligram supplement iron, but I think moving a lot does help. I do some weight training with my upper body because I, my legs are getting so tired. Um, the muscles in my legs and butt it's getting harder and harder to do exercises that involve lifting my entire body weight with my legs even going up the stairs it's, i'm huffing and puffing and even i don't know just walking around sometimes when i start walking it feels like oh my goodness my muscles are sore um it's okay i go for my walks and it's quite steep hills a lot of times but <laughs> So I'm just, you know, because of the weight, I've gained almost 15 kilos by now, which i am it's okay, it's all good. Um, I don't seem to have a lot of fluid collecting in my body. I'm not swollen really, which is good. I try to lie down every three hours or so and just be in the horizontal for a bit, for half an hour or so. I do take naps, um, looking at my list. So. Restless legs, that's what I wanted to talk about. Restless legs can have to do with some deficiencies. One of them is iron and folic acid. So I read up a little bit and the folic acid I'm taking now is only 400, I think it's micrograms or whatever it is. But when you are carrying twins, I read you that you definitely need more. So I'm taking two of those a day now so that I'm upping it to 800 mils, uh, milli or micrograms, whatever it is. So 800 units of that, I'm still taking my vitamin D and the 50 milligrams of iron. And last night I did sleep a lot better. I can't say that I don't have any restless legs, 
it's not you know it's not the entire night but like when i have to get up to the bathroom and then come back then it's hard to fall asleep and that's when i get a little tingly um yes in a couple nights ago i couldn't sleep because the twins were so crazy active and the weird thing is sometimes they turn in a way that all of a sudden they are so on my bladder that it hurts it's pushing my bladder so much to where I feel I'm about to explode like within a couple seconds. It suddenly happens. It's, I don't know how they're doing this, but I don't know. I feel like one of them is like really with head down, like really pushing on it. And that lasts, I don't know, sometimes for a few minutes, sometimes for just a couple minutes. It's very uncomfortable happens sometimes when I walk outside I feel all of a sudden like this huge pressure on my bladder and I go to the bathroom a lot and I drink a lot because it's good um, but it's kind of crazy how the bladder is just getting beaten up I feel I have defrosted both of my freezers we don't have one big freezer we have like below our fridge here that freezer with just two and a half drawers and then we have another small one downstairs and I've defrosted them, I've cleaned them out, they're almost empty so that now I can actually start prepping some food and I'm gonna definitely do that because I want to pre-cook stuff, throw stuff in the crock pot when the babies get here for the first few weeks so we have some meals on hand so that we don't have to worry about like what are we gonna eat because the most important thing is yeah, good food, good food, good food. I'm gonna get some bones this week and some chicken and I'm gonna cook some broth. And I'm um, not sure yet what channel I'm gonna ch share that on. I have my other channel, Healthy Millimillist Mom, where I also share healthy rep recipes sometimes. I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll just share the end result here, but the process of it on the other channel. So if you don't follow me there yet, if you're interested in like minimalism, cleaning and organizing, decluttering and just, um, you know, simple lifestyle, then you may want to follow me there also. I think that's it for now. I'm very happy. I feel good, uh, but it is starting to be a lot of work. I have to admit it's it's just moving around sometimes it's like you know just getting up off the couch it's like oh hold on oh <laughs> and then i'm literally out of breath just getting up off the couch which is kind of funny i'm gonna have another meeting with my midwife soon i don't have an appointment yet but we're getting closer and um so yeah actually from here on out all i'm gonna do with my OBGYN is just at least one other ultrasound when we really get closer to my date, my due date, to confirm how, you know, how they're positioned so that we know what's going on. And other than that, I'm going to do everything else with my midwife. She's going to listen for heartbeats and she's going to just calm me. Can I just tell you honestly that after my doctor's appointments, I'm always, I'm not in a good balanced space, although everything has been really good and there have never been any negative news, but you know, it's all, only been good news. Everything was always spot on, but I don't know. It just makes me nervous. And like just the thing with my blood pressure, you know, every time I'm there, my blood pressure is just too high. But every day when I take it at home, it's it's so perfect. It's really almost completely perfect. If I do it by the rules, you know, you have to sit down at least for five minutes, feet down. You don't want to talk. You don't want to eat. You just want to be in a calm state. And then it's always good. And he's like, oh my goodness, your blood pressure is so high. And I'm like, I promise. I take it at home. And this morning, like that day, couple days ago at home it was 120 128 over 77 which is pretty good it's not high or low it's it's okay and there it was like I think 147 over 99 which is really high but 
it's like this every time. <laughs> And I've checked, you know, I've checked like my, my device. I usually, I take it three, four, five times in a row to see if it's consistent. And it, you know, it is. So I don't know. Going to see my midwife is always very reassuring because she calms me down. And now I'm gonna show you my bump. It's growing more and more and my skin it's not as itchy, some you know, because I do put a lot of cream on it, but it does feel like it's thin as paper. It's very sensitive. Okay, so let's look at the bump, and uh, there it is. This the skin is just so sensitive, especially around here, around my belly button. It feels very uncomfortable, it's, you know, like even when my daughter or Andreas touch my belly, I'm just like, okay, just very soft around the middle. Here I'm not as sensitive, but here it's so sensitive. It's so thin already. And yes, my belly button is definitely coming outward now. From the side. And Lately, I've, I don't know, last night I had some pain like way up here, felt like my ab muscle up here. I don't know what that is, it's like way up here. It was like a very sore muscle and it felt very uncomfortable last night. So yeah, I, I love my bump. It's definitely a lot of work to carry it around. It's heavy, but I'm so happy that I don't really have any back pain. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed yet and you'd like to follow along, please subscribe and um, I hope to see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.